We are Jungle Beats, Australia's plug to the best reviews in the country. I'm Alexander Sandalus. And I'm Alexander Mann. And together, we are Australia's plug to the worst reviews in the country. Why is Alexander Mann not here? Because he has the flu. Why am I wearing boxer shorts? False, they're incorrect. You, they're not boxer shorts. I wear un underwear underneath these things, lads, girls. These have pockets in them. Let's clear that up, number one. These are shorts, I'm changing the game. Two, Alexander Mann has the flu. Please send him a message on Facebook saying how much you miss him. We thought, well, why not get a couple reviews out? We've done one solo review before. Let us know what you guys think of the solo reviews. If one of us isn't here, or away, or is sick, instead of not doing a review for a week or two, what do you guys think? Do it solo, or wait? Don't care. Anyway, we're gonna, um, are we? See, such a habit. Not we, I. I'm gonna review the underachievers. The underachievers are a, Brook, uh, a duo, hip hop duo from Brooklyn, New York, Flatbush. Um, I found out about them through Mick Jenkins, they opened for Mick Jenkins in Melbourne about a year ago. And they were great. Um, when a opener to uh, an artist can reel you in and get them get you into their music, that's when you know they did a good job and they delivered energy, passion, and a, a raw, green style that I really enjoyed. And they just came out with a new album called After The Rain. I've heard Renaissance, that 2017 album, and I'm looking forward to this 11 track, 40 minute album right here. Um, if you like people like Flatbush Zombies, Run The Jewels, I would check them out because that's similar type of energy you're going to get. We got AK and we got Izza. These are the two guys. Let's get right into it, baby. This is weird. I'm just sitting here by myself. I feel like Sean seen this bitch. But wait, without all the subscribers. <laughs> Trying to put my finger on that production, it's like a funky fusion of maybe trap funk fusion, like with that, you're getting those, and this is why I wish I had Alexander Mann, he's very good at describing production, but you get this high temp, high pitch tempo in the background, um, beat, lay it over this drum pattern, I think it's a drum pattern that just consistently hits, and the fusion really, you don't need a switch up, usually some type of switch up is needed, but for this, like, they're able to flow over very, they distribute their, their lyrics and their rhyme schemes very nicely over that track. I didn't get bored there. And a lot of lines too, like I'm pull, I always pull up the lyrics. Um, more of a lyric type of guy. Quite self-aware too, Izzy starts off, you know, talking about the state of affairs with drugs and his relationship with drugs and how his relationship with his fans and his people, he says, they brainwash the people and all the youth especially, and I'm part of the problem. Tell the kids to do drugs and weeds. I'd, weed, I'd rather see you prosper. It's about the balance and symmetry. So kind of coming to terms with, well, is it the media and government kind of telling you one thing, or is this me telling you another thing? Is that the right thing? Kind of the questioning yourself. And you got Izzy talking about his kind of... Uh, relationship with alcohol he said kick the bottle in for too long i feel the strain when i hit the throttle trying to move on i still remain 
So it's quite an uh, open track them just describing their relationship with their vices. Yo, I like that. I love how um they're continuing to reflect on their vices while also paying homage to different singers and songwriters before that time, Smokey Robinson, Luther Vandross, um, Stevie Wonder, all iconic singer-songwriters who have paved the way. You know, hip-hop artists often don't pay homage to these guys, um, even though we're in a different genre. Those guys have paved the foundation of music today, so I really like that, and I, I believe probably because they've been quite a bit of an influence on their life, and maybe the production of this album, because this production is quite a bit lighter, a bit more funky, a bit more upbeat. I could definitely hear someone like Gold Link on this track, a nice feature there. Um, other than that, uh, the lyrical content is staying consistent, and a reference to, once again, the track Light Speed. Um, they did that previously on the, on the, on the first track. They referenced um, Rain, because that's in the, in the title of the word and the reference of the, the title of the track. So I like how they're continuing to add a bit more depth to in reference to each track name. That's like Jay Z inspired. Is that from? You know, typically, I'm not a fan. It's hard for those types of songs to, for me, to really enjoy. Um, because I feel like there's a lot that can go wrong when you go that high tempo, not high tempo, when you go that real kind of almost a bit like a poppy infusion with these brass instrumentation that they'd be using. I don't know if that was a trumpet. It's, it sounded like it was a little synthesized as well. Um, and, and with that type of female vocalist where, you know, we not really bringing much different to the table. It suits the track, suits the cohesiveness of the album, but by itself, not the biggest fan of a track like that, but I'm not mad at it because in the concept of the album, so far it stayed relatively consistent. Um, probably didn't need that extra feature towards the end, could have kept this a two and a half minute track. Other than that, I'm gonna keep it moving. <laughs> So far, I'm liking, I notice on pretty much every track so far, Brass Tracks has been the producer, the sole producer of this, and I think he's done a good, decent job at keeping this sonically cohesive while still being able to add a bit of bit of flair, you know, a little bit of here and there, something a little bit, you know, like that high temp, high pitch kind of chipmunk, um, I don't know how you describe it, like it sounds like a female vocalist, but it could just be a male pitched high, just like Rockhampton do. Uh, 
those little things, those little additions adds a nice flavor on this kind of, like if you just strip all that away and you just have this beat, pretty East Coast beat to me, obviously in New York type beat, obviously that's where they come from, but they've added a bit of their own uniqueness on top. And I finally got some lyrics here on Genius. This is, the, this is a funny line to me. I laughed at her A cups when she took off her shirt, but she copped a new ass. That shit is mighty absurd. Um, just about the superficiality of men. You know, if we can't get one, as long as we get the other or vice versa. A vibe so far, just reflecting on, on the success that they're having and maneuvering through that. And also still continually the theme of their vices and drugs is, is ever present um, in almost every track, which is nothing wrong with that. It's been a hard week addiction, always taking my faith. I seem to crumble, peer pressure, taking love from my space. And then the devil comes and both of them just fuck on my place. I might have worn the wrong path, it's time to switch your destination. Such a hard road to paradise, filled with temptation. The planets keep spinning and the world ain't moving slower. If you want to make a chain, no better time than the moment. Do we release the burden? Nothing's pitch your perfect, find the truth or through the curtains How you view yourself determines all the thoughts that you've converted Move all the purists, tell me how you choose to service When you promise that the prison I don't know man, I don't know I don't know It's, it's not the verses, I think the verses are good By AK and Izzah starting off, I think that was solid. But just the chorus by Father Dude. Um, didn't need to, I once again, didn't need to fit. But I guess it's how you want to finish the track. You want to finish it on a more aggressive um, verse. And I'm talking aggressive in comparison to the chorus. Um, not that it was particularly aggressive. Or do you want to finish it with the more soulful chorus, which... Maybe they're, they're trying to find their own versions of a similar type of sound to a, you know, a Luther Van... Not, not, not that these sounds like Luther Vandross, but like a similar kind of sonic that has that similar type of, you know, uh, soulful effect. I'm just not sold on it. And I don't... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, but I did enjoy the verses. You know, there's a lot of kind of self-awareness, self... like inspirational motive like there's things there's jewels there's little jewels in, in these verses by both these guys how you view yourself determines all the thoughts that you've converted evil of the purest tell me how you choose to service and probably to rebut people like my opinions um choose your path to each his own you don't have to be a clone that's a big thing talking about music you know i don't think these guys really are being a clone at all um i really wouldn't I don't feel like they're copying anybody. So they are, in their own way, standing on their own. you got to respect, give them an element of respect for that. Regardless of whether, you know, I love it or, or enjoy it too much. Oh, that's a good line. That's how you do it right there. That's that's the best track on the album so far. Evil Things, you know, conceptually strong, lyrically strong. One of one of the strongest tracks here. It really felt felt like this was a personal topic to them. Um, I can't pull up the lyrics. I'm not a genius yet, but there were 
quite a few memorable bars, especially towards that first half of the track that, that really, oh, okay, they caught me. Um, and the, the subtle piano in the background layering throughout the whole song. And as that feature, Mello is her name. I've never heard of her, but, you know, she was so fitting to this song, such a a nice addition, a supplement to this track. Like the other tracks with those other features, I felt like they weren't needed right here. Very nice addition, very welcome, very pleasant, beautiful soft vocals that add such a nice harmony to this track. So love that. I'm just channeling the vibe from what I feel inside Who would have thought I'd be what wild with my niggas, not I I grow up, but it seems my biggest fear is bringing pain from the past To a future that ain't clear, I learned a lot from the other side Destroyed and built my mind Went from a pleasure to a nigga just seen it But you know that we can weather the storm Learn to perform with the heart Like throwing thoughts and nigga hitting the mark I don't regret, I always learn from the dark the first verse strong very strong opener right here and a lot of maneuvering through kind of giving you insightful like lessons into th these artists' lives um, revolving around their drug addiction and the, the consequences of their drug addiction and what they learned. Can't depend on a drug when it's controlling how you feel and can't depend on getting high just to give your life meaning. Everything in moderation, but a nigga couldn't see it being abusing different thing and convince myself I need it. You know, there is so many people who are going to relate to that. It's such a simple thing, right? It's not particularly complex or, you know, that's fine, okay? The, that's not what these guys, these guys aren't trying to be cryptic like Kendrick Lamar, and that's fine. But it's powerful in of itself. You know, been abusing different things, convinced myself I need it, till I went from a pleasure to a nigga just fiending. You know, just the transformation you make, becoming addicted through drugs. You know, it's something that I haven't thankfully related to, but it's something that many of you have. Uh... I can't speak an Alexander man, um, but many people have. The, when they hit the, the hook, um, that kind of distorted low hook, uh, that was a nice switch up to the cadence of the song. The production, quite a bit quite a high BPM, um, gave you a bit higher tempo, but it wasn't so disconnected from the rest of the tracks where it's still you know, relatively cohesive and I can still ride that wave um, without being thrown off and felt like, oh, that was a bit, where did that come from? So... Uh, once again, another 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 really solid, good track here. The music video is cool, you know, and I just want to talk about the music video and how it relates to the production because the music video had this overall look where it's like they were stuck in like a fish tank or something. Like there was, an, like, because you could see the little wave effect. Um, it was like they were stuck underwater or something like that. And it makes sense, right? The, the, the album is called uh, After the Rain. So I think there's this underlying theme of like the symbol of water and rain. And it had this pretty cool effect. They were on the phone talking. I'm not sure what that's supposed to kind of symbolize, represent. However, like, 
especially during Iz's first verse, um, I noticed the production would almost slow down. Like it's a real weird tempo they did with the production. Like at, at times, like it would almost feel like the production was in slow motion while I watched the distorted effect of the video. And it, it gave this real weird, like zany type of vibe that I don't often feel or, or see. Um, so I don't, yeah, I don't really know how to feel about that. I don't really, I feel like, actually, no, I do know how to feel, especially about both those verses of Soul, especially AK. He really stood in his own there. Um, once again, uh, I see what the underachievers are trying to do with putting in these features. Um, I see it. So far, it's only worked once for me. King Jet, the feature there. Um, once again, not the worst feature on this album, but uh, didn't vibe with me. I don't think you needed to go to that type of uh, sonic delivery for this track. Um, I feel like you guys were great on your own. Um, you could have handled that hook on your own. I could definitely hear someone like Vince Staples on this track. I feel like they're almost, I, I hear kind of his tone on this track a little bit. I, really, I like the way they ended this. I'm with the mortician. Until I'm with the mortician, I'm going to make them all listen. No, their heart's wishing that I just abort the mission. Kind of referencing the haters and the, and the people looking down upon you. I'm done with the poor decisions. Had to switch my way of living. Now the storm's cooled down and the morning sun's risen. Very clever. Look at the, look at the album cover. The morning sun's risen. I feel like this album right here is representing an acknowledgement with one's vices, an acknowledgement with one's addiction, and then coming out of that tunnel and seeing the sun rise again and growing and developing from it. So in fact, just that line, that kind of symbology has given me a lot deeper appreciation and respect for this album right here because this is a, and it's hard to do when you have a duo because you're individuals, you're living individual lives, but these guys are obviously quite inter interconnected and relate a lot on many levels. So it's really nice to see how it's kind of a helix of like growth and development between the two and how them deliver this through the art of music is actually quite, it's quite good. Uh, so far, um, yeah, I really, I, I like that a lot. Respect that. Again, more lessons, more lessons. An emphasis on building what's up here. They say you can't try to hurt you, but only see a mirage. You met the tables been turning like I was twisting a knob. Instead of work hard and earn it, you cut the habit is designed to. Stop you from the cabins, take the vanish. This is vital. Eat my vanish, bump on my core the surface, but I'm eager. Another hopeless dreamer, but won't give up till my feet up. And when the mob I teach his promise, practice what I teach you. Um. Very simple concept, which is not a bad thing, but depicting the yin and yang, the chaos and order, the war inside their minds and the war that goes inside one's minds when you're battling this push and pull of addiction. Um, quite enjoyable just off, off the basis of, of that topic. Well, not maybe not as enjoyable as the other tracks, but still um, respectable. And I acknowledge kind of what they're doing there. I think many people can relate once again to that battle, you know, just demonstrating that they are in fact human and they're still going through these things, even though they may be coming out of the tunnel, it's still a living present uh, challenge for them. Just like Saturn with the rays, we go 
going in and out of Brooklyn on the block. I'm hoodie, look for many friends of cuts of drugs. I promise not to do them. Find out if I want that power, cause with that influence, so I dedicate my every hour. That's a nice way to end. And I think this track can be summarized by this one line. All that struggle turned me to a super sane. And then even the first line, first of all, let me say thank you to my dad and mother. I feel like those two lines really wrap up. They symbolize the, the summary of this song right here. It's an acknowledgement of the past, the present, and a looking forward to of the future and a kind of an a optimistic kind of glow which can be represented by the cover the sun rising by these two who have gone through their own versions of fire and and pain and suffering through their vices addiction and i'm sure many other things i haven't acknowledged on this album but a nice way to end it wraps it up in a nice little bow this isn't a top 10 album for me um but Still, without that being said, like this album is is quite good, especially now as I kind of understand the concept more thoroughly and it's really completed now. We've gone full circle um, and I feel like I would be able to appreciate and relate to it a lot more if I had lived those experiences similar to they have, but, but I haven't, but it doesn't mean I can't uh, direct empathy towards it and give sympathy and understand a little bit. And so with that being said, this by the underachievers look i haven't listened to all their projects but this is the first project i've probably sat down listened to word for word the renaissance uh, it was just background for me um and i saw it live as well that was more a bit more power a bit more aggressive this is more introspection retrospection and self-awareness and growth and development um which is quite refreshing uh for you guys, for Underachievers fans, let me know where this sits for you on the discography for Underachievers. Is this your favorite album, least favorite album, somewhere in the middle? What do you love, like, and not like about it? Because for me, uh, what I didn't like, oh, obviously I mentioned before, some of the sonics, some of the features, um, and the, 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 the implementation of those features. Uh, other than that, I feel like Iza and... AK stood on their own and they delivered what they're known for and even a bit more with the reflection and growth and self-awareness. So other than that, I feel like there's a lot listeners can take away. Um, this isn't supposed to be some complex, in-depth, you know, amazing body of work that blows people away, but it's meant to, you know, get you thinking. It'll get you uh, considerate of the journey of other people, the, the, the vices and the plights of other people uh, while enjoying a, a good, pretty, sonically pretty uh, project that stays cohesive. We're Jungle Beats. Oh, shit. Shit. I'm Alexander, man. I'm Alexander Sandalis. And we are Jungle Beats, make sure you don't do anything because you're just fine the way you are. That's the biggest lie that's ever been told. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to do nothing. See ya!